Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Um, we're gonna go over some Twitter information. There's a lot of good charts, lots of good information here. Um, it seems like to me that everything is putting in large bullish engulfing uh, patterns on very long time frame charts, like monthly candlestick charts. Uh, what that means is that we have a good chance of bottoming here and rolling a lot higher. Uh, that's what the bigger long-term charts uh, are meaning. And I'm going to go over a bunch of different things here, uh, mainly commodity related. Um, there's going to be some market conditions tied into this, you know, with like rates and and investments of, of certain things. So, uh, you know, stick around to the end. There's going to be a lot of stuff there. And uh, we're going to dive in here and I'll give you my opinion as we go. So let, let's dive in. Let's see what we've got. Uh, if you want to follow me on, on Twitter, it's at finding underscore finance. The name is fi Finding Value Finance. So um, I put in here, solar is looking really good. Solar and renewables. And I said, uh, it's just a matter of time before some news comes out about solar and wind. The big boys are positioning. Uh, so that's what I think is potentially happening. We, we could probably see some news coming out here shortly saying that they're going to come out with some package that they're just going to be buying all you know solar all over the place. Uh, that's probably also very positive for for silver. Uh, Scott posted a strong monthly close game on, and that's what I mean about the monthly closes. Uh, we haven't started going parabolic yet, and we still have unprecedented amount of cash sitting on the sidelines. Um, what this is is a bullish engulfing. Uh, it's a bullish engulfing pattern. It's where the candlestick engulfs the one before it. It engulfs the opening and closing price. This is a reversal candlestick where we potentially go higher. If you look at the monthly close on Camco and URNM and all these different uh, uranium stocks, we have obviously the accumulation cylinder that's coming, but we're also putting in a bullish monthly close today, um, a bullish engulfing pattern where that could potentially be a launch pad. And if it is, we could see a very big move uh, out of this if the buyers want to push it here. Uh, this is the accumulation cylinder. Um, what this is, is he took a different stock. I think it's something on the lines of, I don't know which stock this is, uh, but it's, it's a stock that has a similar setup. And this setup is seen everywhere around uh, the markets. Uh, you can look at history. They're all over the place. It's, it's a function of uh, the psychology of humans. And what happened here, and again, this is on different time frames, uh, this, this pattern is. We go into an accumulation cylinder, which we're going in right now, then we get a huge launch. Um, this one's overlaid on Camco, but they're all, they're all basically have these patterns across many different commodities. It's not just uranium, although uranium's got a whole bunch. I'm seeing it in lithium. I'm seeing it in uranium. I'm seeing it in oil and natural gas stocks. Uh, I'm seeing it in energy service stocks. I am seeing this everywhere. And the big move is probably just ahead of us. And these patterns are, they repeat. It's, it's human psychology. And if that is the case, if it does repeat, uh, we're in for it, guys. This is this is going to be a life changing opportunity. <clears throat> uh, Cuppy, he re this he's a hedge fund guy. He says, "Remember when everybody hated thermal? He's talking about thermal coal, and I was long. Uranium is the new thermal, but with more amplitude. Think the pullback and sput is finally done." And he's posted the Newcastle thermal coal, which is rocketing higher, and he thinks. Like I think, uh, like we see in the chart patterns, like Scott's presenting, like we see in the candlestick uh, bullish engulfing, uh, that uranium's probably the next one uh, to hit it up to the upside. Uh, looking at this, we've got uh, UUUU. This is John Hinster. He's putting his stuff out here. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that all these guys are posting stuff. This is a bullish engulfing here on UUUU, and it's right on support. Uh, a lot of the times you'll see the left-hand side match the right-hand side. Um, so we've got this large kind of volatility here. We've got the large volatility over here. 
we hit and touched our support line. Now I think it's time to get running. Uh, let's hope that's the case. And we're getting that sim the symmetry. This large volatility over here is the large volatility over here. And hopefully we just blast off uh, to the moon. Now here's um, uh, uh, Tavi. It says the median real revenue growth for the FANG stocks has efficiently turned negative for the first time in almost two decades. Remember about the rotation of money I always talk about. That when oil and energy and all these different input costs go up, that you're going to see regular companies um, growth and their revenues and, and earnings go down. This is the ramification of that environment. Money is going to rotate out of Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google at some point. I'm not saying the exact timing of this. The timing's the hardest part. But look, the timing, I think, is very soon. And we're throwing patterns on all of our commodity stocks that look like they're going to make big upward uh, movements. And we're starting to see the negative ramifications in other sectors. This will be the money that feeds the commodity uh, areas. Money's going to rotate. They're going to make less money. Money's going to rotate over to the commodity boys that are making a bunch. And it's going to be a party. It's going to be a party. Uh, this is Happy Hawaiian. He says, seemed like every day mortgage rates rose. Fintwit was all over it, posting doomsday messages. Now that it's coming down sharply, it's crickets. Mortgage rates are down to 5.13% from 5.5% just two days ago. They peaked at 6.28% in June. These mortgage rates coming back down are going to help the housing market, the real estate market. And I think a lot of people just think, oh, we're just going straight higher with interest rates on mortgages and stuff like that. Now, I don't think so. I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna settle out at some rate between four and a half and five and a half percent. And it's gonna be still good fuel. And and that's a pretty low interest rate historically. It's 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 a below average interest rate historically. And I think the market's going to find some footing. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna watch the data. Uh, join the website, you know, this this uh, YouTube channel here, and we'll watch it together. Uh, I posted this. She, she can't even put words together right now. Um, it says, the green energy narrative is pushed by the elite status using their own mass media at great, co great cost to all of us. The only large-scale option is nuclear. They have now started to reverse the cell to their citizens, which will take time. Time they have discovered that they do not have. <laughs> Um, nuclear's they're going to have to extend these plants, guys. They're going to extend them. We're going to have a huge crunch in nuclear, I should say, in uranium. And things are going to get pretty, pretty ridiculous, I think. Um, one thing I wrote, I said, we know a lot of things are backordered and delayed. How is this impacting sales and GDP? Perhaps we're not really in a recession, but in a sales delayed world. So we could be in technically a recession but the market is much stronger than what the numbers are printing because of the back orders and delays. So a recession is inherently a form of weakness. But if a recession is brought about because we've got backlogs of a whole bunch of different things, that the, that the economy isn't just spitting these things out, that people have a bunch of money, but they can't buy what they want because it's delayed or back ordered, like cars and stuff like that. Perhaps that's slowing and impacting the sales of GDP. That the recession isn't a form of weakness. It's a form of constraint in the system, given lockdowns in China and all these other things. The system is more robust than what most people think. That is where that demand for oil is coming from. That's why it's not easing back. Perhaps the majority of people have it wrong. It's because we, we can't buy as much as what most people want. That is the, the problem. Yeah, I posted a clip with Terry. I'm, thank, you know, I'm thankful for having him on. Uh, it says, here's Tavi. So you're telling me that a softer tone by the Fed won't cause commodity prices to rise again. None of the structural issues have been resolved. Overall CapEx for producers have gone nowhere, and money tightening has only reduced capital available available for new investment. This is CapEx for commodity producers 
it is way down. This does not look like a peak for commodities. The commodity bull market hasn't really even, it started, but it hasn't had the big move yet. They haven't been putting in any CapEx. They haven't been fixing the problems. We are going to find a rude awakening of commodity prices soon. I think it's going to get pretty ugly. Great for us who are invested in it. Ugly for everyone else. Uh, it says, here we go. Huge breakout confirmed on Pantheon Resources. Uh, it's an oil stock. It is breaking its downtrend. Now, we are breaking downtrends across a whole bunch of different sectors and a whole bunch of different commodities. Uh, oil, natural gas, uh, oil. We've got downtrends being broken in uranium. It is a plethora of opportunity. If you guys want to know what the opportunities are, go to the script description link below. Uh, sign up for a platinum membership. And we've got a question and answer session this, this Sunday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's going to be crazy. Lots of opportunities. Uh, this is North Star. Looking at the dollar versus Euro Yen G, G, uh, Great Britain's is like watching a bunch of kids jumping up and down in a falling escalator. Kids equal the currency. Elevator equals dropping, which equals inflation. The DXY oscillating between 60 and 160 since the 70s, but inflation obliterates it every time. The inflation forcing the elevator down, and these are the guys going back and forth uh, with currencies. Gold is your inflation measurement. $50 back then, $1,800, and then it's going to go to $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever it ends up being in 2030. So um, the dollar and all currencies are falling, but we're just looking at the relative strength or weakness against them uh, if you're using the DXY. Uh, we've got Eric Nuttall here, record earnings, record free cash flow, many companies approaching debt free status in early 2023. And most committing to a return of 75% or more of free cash flow back to shareholders via dividends, buybacks in 2023. When will the generalists wake up? We've got a whole bunch of companies that are under the target multiple, only a few are in it, that are going to raise up and probably these guys on the left-hand side are small cap producing companies. What's going to happen is they're going to flip on the expensive side and outperform all these at the top of the bull market. They've got, they can go up two, three X to hit this target multiple without being overvalued. And if we've got an increasing oil price alongside this, we've got huge opportunities here uh, for free, free cash flow uh, and, and that compared to their enterprise value to get back to historical norm. Huge opportunity, guys. Here's SM Energy right over here on the left, though. <laughs> I love it. And then the, their hedges roll off, too. A lot of the hedging rolls off for a lot of the companies. Uh, I wrote, in order to make money, you actually have to buy the pullbacks or drawdowns. The greatest amount of fear is when you should be the most excited. I get excited when things are down and not up. I've rewired, we rewired myself to be that way. I'm just kind of talking about if you want to be a long-term investor, you got to buy things when they're down. You got to buy them when they're down. Uh, what I've got here is oil looks great here. Uh, we've got a channel coming down and it's broken to the upside. Uh, it's It was looking super strong. It is looking super strong. And we've broken that downtrend channel. Uh, I write here, large returns need great entry points. Entry points that don't rely on price movement, but on patterns, ratios, and market conditions. Become a great investor by using other information than just price movement. It is the art of stacking data. We've got, um, in my opinion, in the uranium sector, we've got Camco will lead the pack higher. They are a producer. That's where the smart money will flow first. Developers most likely will be alongside it or slightly delayed. Those are those developing companies, companies like Global Atomic and Encore Energy and all those developers. Then the juniors. The junior exploration companies will be last to move as this is retail investor heaven. What I mean by that is that's where the retail goes. They want the big um, the big bang uh, for their money. So they go and speculate over in the juniors. And what, what happens here is you want to look for the laggards, the explorers here, the juniors. And you want to accumulate those because the people haven't run into them yet. They're starting to. And that's where I'm looking. And we'll talk about that on Sunday. 
uh, with the Platinum members on what I think still looks really good and what I'm doing myself. Uh, here's something getting a Platinum membership was well worth the investment. Keep it up, Andy. Uh, natural Gas and Livermore's Accumulation Cylinder. Dutch TTF gas cylinder playing out. America is next. Got gas. Um, and what this is, is they've got a lot. This is the TTF Dutch. We've got the, the, the first wave, the second, and then the third. And then now we're starting that big, huge run to the upside for natural gas uh, for the Dutch. That, in my opinion, is the accumulation cylinder here and then the break higher. We're right like here right now. That is Jesse Livermore's accumulation cylinder. Uh, we're getting that cylinder on the right-hand side. We broke out of this uh, consolidation period in natural gas. This is American natural gas. We're, we're, we have one, two, three, four, five. Are we going to hit all the way down to six? I don't know. Uh, we may have already hit six down here, and we're about to, to cruise higher. I'm not going to try to time this thing perfectly. I'm about accumulating it and riding this thing higher. And this is it zoomed in. This is the cylinder that I'm talking about on the cylinder. One, two, three, four, five. Are we going to get one all the way back down to here in the fall? That is a possibility. Now, we'll see if we hit it. I don't know. Maybe we, we come back and do a loop up here and go much, much higher. Uh, difficult to say. I'm not here to try to speculate on the short term. I'm here to invest copious amounts of money for the big move. So my life can change and I can do whatever I want when I want. That's that's the goal of all this. Uh, coming on down, uh, it says another Livermore accumulation pattern spotted. The uranium space is full of amazing chart patterns. Uh, this one's UEC. We talk about the accumulation cylinder a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to look for that break. Uh, we Remember, we've got the large bullish engulfing pattern on the monthly candlestick existing across the sector in a whole bunch of different companies. Um, that is called confluence. It's a bunch of information that comes together and aligns. And we're seeing across a whole bunch of other commodity sectors as well, just like I showed you in natural gas. Uh, so this is looking fantastic, guys. The case here is ultra strong for a bull market in all of these different commodities that are going to start here uh, with a launch to, uh, he's got Uranus, Uranus on there. We could launch here. It's a possibility. I don't want to get everybody too pumped up, but it is a possibility. It says, uh, Fed Jerome Powell, inflation has obviously surprised to the upside. Well, and then he goes in and talks about uh, his predictions, and it says, said, said we were in for a glorious commodities bull market and big inflation. You need to th rethink your sources. Uh, coming up here, we've got uh, the solar ETF. I've talked about solar. Um, it's broken out. It was up again today. This has got big volume. Uh, I do think that there are some opportunities in solar right now. Uh, this is the URM ETF. These are on different time frames. There's the bullish engulfing here. Uh, that's what that bottoming candlestick and reversal candlestick looks like to go higher. Uh, on another time frame, we got nice little wicks at the bottom right at support, and we're, we're launching higher on a weekly candlestick basis. This was up even a little bit higher today uh, with the broken down trend line. This is the daily candlesticks, and we've broken to the upside. It looks really good to continue higher. Uh, let's hope that momentum can continue for uranium and these other commodity stocks. Uh, it says, is silver going to get a bloody nose tomorrow? Small down day. It actually ended up a little bit today. Uh, very strong in silver. I think there's a lot of opportunity in silver as well and the mining companies. Um, and, and they're just at a different stage. They're lagging behind the rest of the commodities. So the value is actually pretty good in the gold and silver mining companies right now. Uh, so I, I talked about this. This is the market conditions. Stimulus and commercial bank lending drives M2 inflation. M2 inflation and energy constraints drives interest rates higher. Energy constraints will constrain GDP growth, leading to stagflation. Uh, I, I've got a couple of pictures here. We've seen this before. This is the loan and leases and bank credit for all commercial banks uh, heading higher. That is inflationary. Remember, the majority of money, 99%, comes from loans and leases in the bank banking system. If you look at the PPI to CPI ratio, what this means or tells us is when this is going up, you're getting a increase 
the, the, the producer price index is increasing at a faster pace than the CPI. The CPI is a lagged uh, number. The PPI is your kind of leading indicator. As long as your leading indicator is going up at a faster pace than your CPI, you're in an inflationary environment. We went from the bottom here in 2000, 2002, uh, upward, inflationary environment, came back down, and now we're hitting another inflationary environment. And we're about to break out of the top of this pattern. That is something to watch. We break out of this pattern, we are going ballistic, Goose. It's time to go ballistic, Mav. So I think that's what he says. Uh, means that inflation is going to break out of its psychological control. We could go into a very highly inflationary environment if this breaks. Uh, this is the M2 money supply in relationship to GDP. Uh, remember that 2002 time frame where the PPI, the PPI here starts going up. That's this here. What this is saying is that we've got a large inflation. We've, we've got more M2 money supply growth than GDP. This here is inflationary, and we've broken out of the upside of that, where we're in no man's land now. We're, we are creating far more money than we are goods and services in our economy. That imbalance leads to rapid inflation. That's what it's, that's what it's leading to, rapid inflation. Uh, this is the checkable deposits. We've seen this before. This is money in the banking system. It is also at all-time highs. Lots of money on the sidelines here, guys. Lots of money on the sidelines. Coming on down, it says stagflation and higher interest rates direct money flows away from stocks and bonds. Large energy constraints and stagflation could lead to fear. Fear could lead to increased money velocity. Increased money velocity leads to worse inflation chasing fewer goods. People getting scared and kicking that money velocity up is a possibility. Uh, we've got here, it says, break to the upside of XAU to gold and silver miners versus gold itself. Uh, this is an opportunity, guys. The gold and silver miners are breaking the downtrend of that ratio. We're seeing across all these different commodities, breaking downtrend lines. This is an opportunity for gold and silver miners, in my opinion. Uh, this is GDX in relationship to oil. Uh, there's a possibility that gold could outrun oil and, and move higher here. This is uh, GDX, which is the gold and silver mining companies. Um, there, we look at a whole bunch of different ratios. They kind of guide us where we should be looking. And the gold and silver mining companies are actually looking quite good uh, in terms of value or the royalty companies, whichever ones you prefer. And this is a possibility where GDX could vastly outperform oil. Uh, this is CCJ. There's your big bullish engulfing. Uh, that looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, I did ask, am I, you know, I'm a long-term investor, but how many of you are interested in short-term trading? Uh, it looks like the majority are only investors only. I'm going to skip through that. Uh, this one's kind of cool. It says Metallic Minerals. Uh, this is a silver, small silver exploration company. Uh, it is breaking its downtrend. It's looking fantastic. And with the XAU to gold ratio breaking, uh, this is a little silver mining company. It does look really good. Uh, All Things Ventured, I'm going to bring him on the channel in August. Uh, he's on vacation right now, but I'm gonna, he's going to go on our um, channel, and I'll, I'm going to ask him a bunch of commodity-type questions and shipping questions. So we'll see him soon. Um, Anglo America's new boss sounds warning of future copper supply. Uh, what he's saying is, the world is headed for a severe shortage of copper crucial to the green energy transition as new mines become increasingly difficult to build, according to the new head. I genuinely don't see where all of this copper is going to come from at this point in time, is what he is saying. Uh, so I think copper is a good spot to be looking. These are the spreads between the NYMEX natural gas, Brent oil, and TTF gas. Uh, that's what these three are. So Henry Hub, Dutch, and and Brent crude. We can see a large disparity looking at the spread here between Dutch and Brent on how high it is in comparison to history. Uh, what I think is going to happen is you're going to see the Henry Hub, which is way down here, start to converge to the Dutch natural gas. So I think this will come down a little bit, and I think this will go way up. Uh, as liquefied natural gas terminals are built, 
We're going to see that convergence over time. Uh, and then we're going to see a ridiculous uh, move, I think, in the Henry Hub natural gas in America. Uh, European energy crisis uh, incoming, got oil. Uh, and this is natural gas storage levels in percent of capacity. Uh, this is usually way up here. You know, if they, they they need to get this way up here, but problem is they're not adding into it very quickly. It's really starting to slow down, and you're going to see this blue line diverge from this guy, and we're going to probably come very low this this winter. Uh, if that's the case, we could see a, some problems in uh, Germany natural gas. It's also another form of demand for oil and alternative fuels. So we might see more demand for oil than what most people are projecting because we can't get natural gas storage levels in some of these countries back to uh, an adequate level. Uh, we've got a copy here. It says, where have my housing bears gone? Explain the bearish part in the Dollar Joe results. Another solid quarter. It says, through the first six months, we exceeded the first six months of 2021 in revenue across each segment. As of June 30th, 2022, we had a backlog of 2,172 home sites under contract, as well as 605 Latitude Margaritaville Water Sound homes under contract, which together are expected to result in record sales value. Home builders continue to purchase our home sites as soon as we complete development without any requests for delays or extensions. Residential backlog continues to grow with a record number of home sites and homes under contract. Demand continues to exceed supply. Hey, I thought we were in. A, a housing market crash, guys. Maybe those guys are wrong. Anybody ever think about that? Um, coming down here, this is the gold to M2 money supply that this is probably going to go way up uh, back to the upper level. I've talked about this a lot on the uh, channel. This is a double booty bottom. Uh, you come in, you get a lead in, then you get your, 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 your cheek, and then the other one. And now we're going to break up and probably do some crazy stuff here. That is for gold to account for the money supply or currency supply, I should say. Um, but I'll, I'll end it there, guys. There's a lot of really good stuff. If you want to add me on Twitter, um, I share this stuff uh, throughout the day. But uh, yeah, everything's looking really good in commodities. And there's a lot of opportunity out there. That's all I'm going to say. And the, the fundamentals and technicals all look really good right now. Fingers crossed for the big move coming up, guys. Fingers crossed for the big move. Uh, hopefully it comes. Hopefully momentum stays strong and we rip it higher. If you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website, Platinum Membership, if you're interested. And we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.